the Seine, Paris's iconic river. Its banks are packed with must-see monuments, the Louvre, Notre Dame, the Eiffel Tower. Throughout history, the Seine has shaped local life from prehistoric times until now, and it's set to play a starring role at this summer's Olympic Games. Authorities are racing to boost security, curb pollution and keep visitors entertained. But what legacy will the Games leave on the Seine? Welcome to this edition of France in Focus. I'm Aurora Dupuy. We are in the heart of Paris, where the opening ceremony of the Olympic Games will take place. More than 10,000 athletes will sail six kilometers along the River Seine in a boat parade. Concerts, fireworks, it's the first time ever that an opening ceremony takes place outside a stadium, and more than 300,000 fans are expected to flock to the riverbanks to catch a glimpse of it. Some lucky residents will be in the front row while staying at home. Jean-Marie has lived on his houseboat for 18 years. He'll watch the opening ceremony from his rooftop for free, whilst others will pay nearly 3,000 euros for a ticket. We're incredibly lucky. The last time the Games were held in Paris was in 1924. I don't think I'll experience such a ceremony again. We're in an absolutely magical place here, right by the Champs-Élysées. Like him, around 200 of his neighbours will enjoy the show from their houseboats in a highly monitored area. We're just upstream from the Concorde Bridge in the middle of the grey zone. There'll be huge traffic restrictions. Even on foot or by bike, we'll need special passes. There'll even be bomb squads checking some of the boats. Tight security and new environmental measures have been put in place. Jean-Marie had to renovate his boat to stop polluting the river ahead of the Games. But since the Olympic law, we're now hooked up to the city sewers. So the wastewater is pumped from the engine room behind me into a terminal over there, and that's linked to the city's main sewage system. In all, 250 houseboat owners have had to go green, paying 10 to 20,000 euros for the renovations. This is all part of a bigger project that started eight years ago. It's dubbed the swimming plan. Bathing in the Seine has been banned for 100 years because of dangerous pollution levels, but French authorities want to make it swimmable again by next year. 1.4 billion euros have been forked out to upgrade the sewage system and to prevent it from overflowing when the weather's bad, a tank has been built to collect 20 Olympic-sized swimming pools worth of excess rain. Michel Riotto, you are the honorary president of France Nature Environment. Do you think that the Austerlitz Basin is enough to curb pollution in the River Seine? I don't think the small basin they built, which is 50,000 square metres, is enough to handle the excess wastewater from Paris. If there's a heavy storm, say more than 10 millimetres of rain, that's one million cubic metres of water falling on Paris, which is 70% impermeable. So you'll have about 700,000 cubic metres going back into the sewers. There's also a problem with one of the treatment plants uh, just above Paris that rejects unclean water. It's been treated, but it still remains unclean. What can we do um, to disinfect it properly? There are two water treatment plants upstream. They discharge wastewater that they've treated, but there's still a lot of germs in it. The limit is 900 bacteria per 100 millilitres. That's the standard for safe swimming. So they need to use techniques like ultraviolet light at one of the plants. For the other plant, they'll use a chemical process with pyrformic acid that releases active oxygen and destroys all the organic matter. This will take place right outside the plant, in a canal 500 to 600 metres long, before reaching the Seine. So the product will be deactivated before it gets to the river, making it less dangerous for the ecosystem. 
You're a former microbiologist. What are the dangers of swimming in this type of water today? What kind of bacteria can we find in there? You can get a lot of diarrhea. And even worse, because on top of the bacteria, you also get viruses. The hepatitis A virus, for example, is extremely toxic and can lead to liver cancer. Some other NGOs, such as Surfrider, took measurements last year and showed that some parts of the Seine are still too polluted. Swimming has been banned for a century now here in, in Paris. Do you think that this dream will be achievable by 2025? It's a dream. I think it's a beautiful dream. But the authorities, the city of Paris, need to show us the data. The prefect of Paris told me he would be transparent, that we would have all the information. Well, we're still waiting for it. Would you take a swim in the, in the Seine on the 26th of July? No. No, I won't be swimming in it. Just a few weeks before the Olympics, the water doesn't seem clean to us either. But French authorities remain optimistic. Antoine Marmier, you're the sub-prefect in charge of the Olympic Games here in Paris, namely in charge of the swimming plan. Many athletes are worried about the quality of the water. British swimmers, for example, have said that they will get vaccinated for typhoid and hepatitis A. What will you do if the water is not up to standards? This is a scenario we've prepared for with the Olympic Organizing Committee and the international federations. We've set aside extra days for rescheduling. So, for instance, if test results are no good on the morning of an event, the event will simply be held the next day or the following day. So there's a schedule in place that will be communicated to the athletes so they can anticipate any delays. The water in the Seine is tested regularly, I'm told, but green activists have said that the French government is not being transparent enough with the results. What do you say to those accusations? The test results will be communicated when the time is right. They'll be shared specifically at the time of the competitions so that the athletes know the water quality at that specific moment. Why wait? until the last minute before you communicate on these results. The conditions will change between now and the events, so we're waiting to see the real conditions before communicating anything. Thank you very much. <laughs> the aim is to reduce pollution by 75% by this summer. An ecological transition is in full swing and a cultural one too. Bernard Le Sueur, you are specialised in the history of the Seine. You've just written a book about it. If we go back to the 16th century, the Seine really played a central part in people's lives. Um, tell us how. Indeed, the Seine was a social hub. Everyone came here to get their groceries. The caves weren't straight like now. They were gentle slopes. Back then, Parisians lived by the Seine. They were in harmony with it. The riverbanks consisted in a series of ports, the port where you could find wood, the apple port, the grain port, the hay port, and so on. Parisians came to the Seine every day for many reasons. Guilds came to tan leather. Butchers would even come to slaughter animals on the banks. So there were areas more or less accepted by Parisians, places of communal life. It was a major social spot. And how did things evolve at the end of the 18th century? By the late 18th century, things changed because Paris's population had exploded. Paris was the largest city in Europe and it was primarily supplied by the Seine. More and more boats came because the demand grew. Paris then became a major industrial city and Parisians abandoned the docks. They no longer came for food, which was then brought by rail. The major markets, Les Halles, were closer to train stations than the Seine. So people no longer had a purpose to go to the Seine. 
When they did return, it was for coal and other unpleasant things. It smelled bad and was very polluted, so Parisians distanced themselves from the Seine. And at what point did the Parisians come back to the riverbanks? I pinpoint this to 1975, when the new president, Valérie Giscard d'Estaing, put a stop to Pompidou's plan to further develop roads by the river. Obviously, when you put a highway along the banks, you cut the link between locals and the Seine. I call this fleur urbanization, or the revitalization of the riverfront, echoing the re-urbanization of the 60s when Parisians went to the countryside to explore rural life. Now they're coming back to the banks to rediscover the rivers. And now with the Olympic Games, how do you think that they're going to change things for Parisians? It's going to be an extraordinary and very symbolic moment, highlighting the Seine's place and its rediscovery. We've always used the Seine for festivities, from medieval jousting to hosting heads of state during the Fourth Republic. But now the symbol is incredibly powerful. Le, le symbole est d'une fente extraordinaire. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And that brings us to the end of the show. Thank you for watching. I personally can't wait to take a splash in the River Seine, uh, but it might take a bit more time for that dream to finally come true. Thanks for watching. Take care.